Right, I'm going to get into this. I'm going to okay. do a very quick intro, and then we'll get into the, the full chat. Um, so I'm going to be reading off this script here, just so you don't think Gavin's now looking at babes online. <laughs> okay, here we go. So for all the latest in the English Premier League, stick with us here on the Secret Hot Tub Podcast. Chris McFeely, who do you have lifting the Premier League trophy this year? Uh, eh, I like uh, Liverpool. Yes, they, they're going to win it. Well done. Congratulations. Imagine we did have, yes. imagine I did spring a football podcast on you. you oh my God. I would walk off. I would <laughs> simply leave. I would, if it sucks, hit the bricks. I would be gone. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be walking alone. In that situation, uh, ah, that that's, Liverpool? A, fo- that's a football one. I don't, that's a football one. Is it? Uh, yeah, um, it could be Liverpool. I don't know. Um, hello and welcome to the Secret Hot Tub Podcast, where each episode a guest joins me between the bubble jets to talk toys, transformers, and anything else alliterative. So, Tarka the Otter. Now, to say <laughs> that my guest is the brains of the operation when it comes to the Transformers community would be doing them a great disservice. Although true, it omits the very fact that they also make huge contributions to the very heart and soul of the fandom. A wonderful lad, currently cluing us in on each episode of their YouTube show, Transformers The Basics, it's Chris McFeely. Chris, how are you? I, I, I'm feeling much better for that lovely intro, Gaff. Well, hey. A very flattering intro, so I feel my spirits buoyed. And Toby's obviously oh, agreeing he's, with you. He's a very happy boy right now. Oh, oh could this... Uh, don't tell could me. Could this be the moment? I, could this be it? I Two did minutes in? give Chris the heads up that we are on 2024's first dog watch where Toby's about to be picked up by uh, my sister-in-law for a night on the tiles. And uh, it could kick off at any moment. Toby can kick off at any point. So if you hear him, that's what it is. But but thank you very much for giving us the time of day here, Chris. You know... Thank you for inviting me on. As soon as you did, I was I was like, let's do it. Oh, uh, first thing, let's go. As I said to, we had Nick Roche on the first episode, sometimes even a little worm can land a big fish. <laughs> oh, I thought I was the little worm in that scenario. <laughs> See, that's, you're, you're so <laughs> humble. You're so humble. But I mean, my first kind of question for you is really about your, your status, if you will. Or mm. status. It's up to you. Uh, I think the first time I heard you and your voice, probably similar to a lot of people my age or fans of my age, mm, was on. Stress that because yeah. I feel like I know where you're going with this. Yeah, one. for yeah. sure. <laughs> it would be the the Metrodome DVD release, Transformers yes. the movie, the commentary. So that was like what 2000, 2005, I believe. 2005 Masters came out in. So that is just shy of twenty years yep. ago now. Yep, that's mad, yeah. isn't it? Like, yeah, that is in, in, in perturbing. Yeah, like there, there was a lot less to do back then. I'd say probably absolutely shit all to do back then. So I'd pretty regularly rinse my DVDs, act- actually play the commentaries, which is maniac behaviour today. Like if someone told me... To yeah, can you imagine listening to a commentary today? Like There was a golden age there where... I, I, and, you know, never mind a fan commentary, even actually <laughs> listening to a real director's commentary yeah. with people who were involved in the making of the show. Who is the time? No, no, absolutely. I suppose it's different whenever it's a 20-minute episode of television versus a three-hour mm, film. Yeah. But, but You can just be like, well, I'll watch it, and then I'll watch it with the commentary to see what Chris McFeely thought of the Headmasters, because it's great. It was a real golden age of mad stuff. Could you imagine that being made today? Nah. No, no. Who, who would they have got in instead of you, do you think? To, if they did it today? If they did a commentary um, at all. They would get... Oh, back then? Yeah, I think they'd get... Who would they get? Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> they would get them in. <laughs> but like, yeah. Back at the time, uh, in 2005, um, when the idea of making... I, so I had wound up, uh, uh, like in communication with the guys at Metrodome mm. just because I was on the forums yeah. that they had there. This was the company that was releasing the G1 cartoon mm. on DVD. And they were, you know, they were soliciting ideas and opinions on their forums. And a lot of people were saying, what you need to do is you need to get Peter Cullen and Frank Welker to record <laughs> commentaries. And I'm like, guys. And, and I think the things I was saying, which was like, what if you you could maybe put some postcards in with it? Yeah. Um, but the, I think they just seemed, the things I was saying seemed um, uh, realistic. Yeah. And uh, I think that that just led to me being in conversation with some of the guys uh, at Metrodome who invited me on to uh, get a little bit more involved in the um, G1 card. I think I, I sort of consulted, is maybe the word, for, for the season mm. um, three and four set. Yeah. 
And then whenever they started talking about the um, the Japanese shows, there was the question of a commentary. And uh, I, I remember they um, uh, they said, well, well, we uh, who do you think we could have? Uh, what's the fella's name? Um, oh, what's the fella's name? Uh, Tom Cruise. No, I've forgotten his name now, but he was he's sort of he's a UK like anime writer he's written right. books about the subject okay. um goodness me his name has completely escaped my memory now and it's uh i used to be able to, uh, it's flown from my memory you're, you're over are you over 40 now uh, yeah welcome to the club man that's it that's, it. that's the rest <laughs> of your life now who's that guy what do you call that guy again you know that one guy from that one thing yeah um it was him whoever he was uh or simon Furman were the two right. suggestions that the um the guys uh, floated and I said, well, I know I've read the Transformers entries mm. in this anime author's books and I've noticed things that are wrong. Right. In them. And Simon Furman, you know, God love Simon Furman. Mm. We, we people of our age grew up in the U in the UK. Yep. Uh, we owe a lot of what we love about Transformers to mm -hmm. Simon. Furman. Very much so. But it didn't have anything to do with those cartoons, and I don't think he'd ever watched them at that yeah. point. Yeah, where's the value in that? In terms of, yeah, like you can bring them in; they could talk about it in general terms. But where's mm. the value to someone watching a commentary and wants to learn a bit more about the actual show? Like that's so that so that's where you kind of snaked in. Then is that what you're trying well, to tell I, me? Well, that's simply what I said. And then <laughs> Metrodome came back and said, "Well, would you like to do it?" And like, I was yes. Like, mm -hmm. Let me think about that for a second. Yeah. <laughs> no, mind you, of course, I hadn't seen them at that point either. <laughs> what, you, what you need is an expert on these shows to talk, talk about these commentary. Mm. 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 I was sent over raw VHS copies oh. of the series to have a look at. <laughs> and did your obviously there's an excitement there because like i remember when the vhs of the movie came out over here there was an, an edition of it which had the mm. first episode of headmasters at the end yes and to me at the time it's super exciting transformers you've oh, never God, seen before I... did your heart also sink when you watched them uh, well no they were no they were raw so the vhs's i got were in japanese ah okay, so okay. wasn't able really able to watch them but no, by that point, Metrodome had brought out that that single disc. Do you remember? It was one disc of the first half dozen episodes of Headmasters. Oh, no, uh, I didn't, have that. didn't have that. That's, um, didn't know that even existed. Uh, there, there was that. That was an early... Back when they were doing single discs, a thing. Like, right. they did a single disc of Five Faces. They did a single disc of Rebirth. Okay, uh, okay. They did a single disc of, the, of a five episodes of the G2 cartoon, for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so they so I I'd, I'd had the exposure to the uh, the the one episode yeah on the movie right. VHS or DVD whichever um, I think it was DVD um, that I had uh, and I did then so obviously I guess my heart didn't sink yeah. that low because I bought the DVD with the six <laughs> episodes of it on and I remember putting it on to watch and it was we oh well, yes I remember me me. At least one of my brothers was there as well. And we were like, yes, oh, look at the state of this. Oh, isn't it hilarious? And then we were like three episodes in and he was like, right, turn this off now. Like, no, <laughs> shut up. I'm, I, I want to watch this. I want to I watch this. Like, So, yeah, no, I, I definitely had that uh, that quality filter where I was able to um, yeah. watch it and, and not feel disheartened by the uh, the English dub. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, I really have a, I've grown to have a right proper affection for like the the star dubs or whatever for more of a for mm. for want of a better term. Uh you know, the whole hand over the mouth. I'm the Decept yeah. Decepticon consultant for the Darn you to hell. <laughs> like I'm the ninja consultant for the Decepticons. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> but like I think after you'd because you'd done those, I'd heard obviously your voice and, and because you watch these things often, I think between you and the Conan uh commentary with Arnold Schwarzenegger, they're the two commentaries <laughs> I probably listen to most. And I think that, like the first time we met in in you know real life, I was mm. honestly a little bit kind of starstruck. That's that guy. <laughs> Fart noise. That's that guy. And like I think you've become Yeah, I'd say I mean you're probably not comfortable with that, but like in terms of something of a celebrity and transformer circles for as you say, nearly twenty years now, like do you have any big plans for the twentieth anniversary? Are you going to get like some <laughs> some coins or some enamel badges? Get like uh, uh, yeah, yeah, 
3D model my head and people can uh, print it out at home or something. That's a good <laughs> idea, like a, a coin bank. Oh, oh yeah, with just a slot in the back. Just fully empty, like the real thing. <laughs> oh. And it says uh, a, a fact about a Transformer when you put a coin in. No, just the, these days people would just want it to go the cosmically pirate star screen when you put the coin in. <laughs> the the monster planet Unicron. <laughs> we'll get to your dislike for your own fans later. <laughs> my dislike for my fans could could it, it, it's a a mere weed of a thing compared to your dislike of your oh, fans. Oh god, yeah. I don't even want to talk about them. I mean, I appreciate them and all that for what are they like? Eh? I know, honestly. Oh, well, you didn't show this. Shut up. You know, Gavin. Gavin, you didn't show this thing. Oh well, you already know about it then. So why you, why do you need me to show you? Like, well, fuck. you didn't mention shattered glass. No, I didn't. <laughs> Because it's shite, that's why. <laughs> that's neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> not a quality issue, just a, just a judgment on, uh, you have to understand what's relevant to charting the evolution of a character or a concept. And the, the hilarious mirror backwards universe, which is deliberately <laughs> completely contrary to the reality of the thing, is not helpful to bring up in, in when you're trying to approach a subject that way. Yeah, no, I think that's like, like one of the things I like to do when I'm watching the basics is like when you say something because I've watched every episode obviously you'll say something and I like to go I know and then do a little (laughs) smug face to nobody I'm not making that statement to anyone but in saying or not that did get me thinking about how you kind of have to be you you've got to be on the balls you're the sort of present you're presenting these facts to people but you've got to be ready to also back up your rep as sort of king of the hill on Transformers history but you're also wanting to do the basics, the core elements mm. of a character or an event. So how do you deal with that? Like an inevitable comment of like, you missed this, or do you even try to defend it? Or do you just ignore uh, one of the fans who made you what you are today? <laughs> <laughs> Turn it on me. Uh, depends, honestly. Uh, so, sometimes like, if, if someone says, sometimes I'll expect it. Mm. And then other times, uh, and, I'll, and I, I'll, I'll have a reason. And then other times I'll be like, I'll think to myself, why do you even think that whatever this thing is, yeah. is relevant? Why do you even think that should mm-hmm. be included? You know, why do you think that this offhanded thing from a Facebook page, <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it, it provides no greater context? It, and um, I mean, it, but part of that, it, it speaks to the reason that I decided to start with the basics anyway, mm-hmm. which is that, um, and this is not shade against the TF wiki at all mm. as somebody who's been an admin on, on that for nearly as long, you know, since close to it started working in 2006. Yeah. But, um, the nature of transformers as a franchise with so many different competing mm. fictions, media depictions of everything, uh, the a wiki like that has to take everything as being on equal footing mm. and give it and just present the information as it appears in every source that it appears in. You can't pick and choose whenever you're producing a big communal yeah. project like that. No, for sure, like information-wise. But I can pick and choose yeah. because <laughs> I'm doing one thing that's mine. So I can actually... Not all Transformers fiction is created equal. Mm-hmm. And some stuff doesn't matter. Yeah, no, in, absolutely. In Ar- Armada, Cybertron. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, you have to be able to, to, to pick and choose. And then so some people who, and again, no shade, but some people who only know this stuff because they read about it on a wiki mm-hmm. uh, yep. don't have that 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 sense, that filter of what is that, yeah, a little a little factoid dropped on a club exclusive <laughs> fan book page, the Facebook page yep. is not uh, on equal footing as information presented in one of the, you know, mainstream cartoons or comics and yep. doesn't necessarily need to be mentioned. Yeah, no, there's a definite, like, sub like a subjectivity there but there's also like a straight delineation between what is what can be included in the official basics of a character or an event like obviously like this is now big enough that you donate a lot of your time to it and it's like in doing that and your other creative ventures you do it for a living Mm -hmm. it's my job and so like how does that like have an does that have an effect on your output you were talking earlier about your like an upcoming episode we don't need to reveal the, mm, the title or anything. Secrets. <laughs> but um does it make things easier for you to plan out in advance to coincide with like upcoming releases? You know, like like Rise of the Beasts is coming out. Mm. I should be doing episodes on Rhinox 
uh, Optimus Primal? Or do you sometimes wish you could just forget it all and do the basics on fucking Big Red? <laughs> you know, uh, I think, just I'm thinking about Big Red and how that would be a short. Uh, Big Red, I, I often wonder if there's any, any way I can do shorts on the channel. Yeah. And I feel like... <laughs> I'm not sure that there is. I feel like they have to be a character on the level of Big Red to get into 60 seconds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, certainly in the case of uh, Rise of the Beasts, I was fully planning to do like a theme month mm. for the launch of that film from the start of that year. Uh, so I spaced everything out and I knew what I was doing. Um, not so for um, Transformers 1 coming later this year. Yeah. Uh, because they won't tell us anything about it. Yeah, it's, out, yeah. it's out in like five months. Yeah. Like, and I don't know a single thing about it. And, and I can't, pl I mean, I've already done episodes about the war and the golden age. Mm -hmm. And, um, and we don't know how, how different the movie's vision of that stuff is going to be. That is a video about functionism justifiable. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, I could do a video about functionism and it's on my list of stuff to do, mm -hmm. but Will it be well timed with that? I can safely say I think I'll do an Orion Pax video yeah. later this year to coincide with the release of that film. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's the the amount the the height of the forward planning I have for that. But then yeah, other times like with uh, Rise of the Beasts, um, I am fully fully planned in advance. And then other times, um, I'm usually always thinking a couple of videos ahead anyway. Yeah. Um, at the minute though, yeah, it is. I'm not sure where to go because uh, last year I had that that sort of that those tent poles those milestones mm. along the, the rise of the beasts then obscure month at the end of the year yeah. I was like right I know what I'm doing then and I know what I'm doing then and then we'll mm. fill in the gap and and I don't I don't have that this year I think maybe it's time to get some sponsored ones up to uh, alleviate my need to think up what to do next <laughs> yeah you know? no that's I, I always thought like and that's that's one of the good things about doing something like that where it's information based because I was thinking mm. about doing something similar. But then I realized that I would have to do, I would have to own the toy <laughs> to do a video on it. So I was like, someone's like, hey, do this toy. I've always wanted to see it. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I don't have every Transformer, you know. That's, what, what Much these, as it may appear. What do these do people, what, what do they think? What goes through their minds, you know? Um, we so, can't all be few just having people sending us toys when they want us to look at them. This is it. I mean, I, I've been very lucky and people have been very nice and sending yes. stuff through to us. Like, I do very much appreciate that and keep doing it if you're listening. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that's just me kidding around because very grateful to anybody who ever contributes in any way like that. Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. That's the difference between us and few, though, you know. Um, so, like, with the basics, you've easily got, like, you've got, like, over 260 episodes now. Oh, no, not that many. Uh, 230 odd. Oh, uh, yeah, you're probably of, counting like my total video yeah, count. To total but that's, videos, there's yeah. a few other things besides the basics on there, too. Yeah. So, okay. No, I just know that because, uh, you know, there's a, there's a little number on every folder. Every time ah, I yes. create a new project folder, I know what episode number it is. Oh, so yeah. I'm able to go, it's, oh, it's 230 something. That's a good idea, putting things into folders. I should think about that. Um, well, there's just so many bits and bobs. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think I should be getting a bit more organised. Maybe I can learn from you in that regard. Um, I keep it all on a separate hard drive. This is, <laughs> this is... This is... Yeah, far beyond my skills at the moment. I really should have a backup, shouldn't I? Anyway, <laughs> but you're like... So, you've got all these videos dedicated to either specific characters and era of Transformers. It's been running for over six years now. Uh, yeah, coming up seven years in June now, yeah, which is a weird thought. Yeah, I was going to say, that's my itself. question, is, that's mad, isn't it? Yes, that is mad. <laughs> yeah. uh, it not was not the intent when I started out. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked about this uh, when I'm asked about it, I've talked about it on streams and things, I'm perfectly honest about it. Uh, when I started it, it was because I'd been out of work for a while, mm -hmm. and I was going a bit mad. Yeah. Uh, I needed a project to occupy my, my hands and mind. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, what about a little? Uh, and because I and around the same time was sort of starting to experience the aforementioned frustrations with the way TF Wiki was uh, mm -hmm. recording its information and some of the the discussions that was causing. And I thought, well, what if I uh, try and get simplify it down even more? You know, because yeah. I've always thought of my stuff as just my my stuff is not the the full stop. Mine is not the line at the end. Mm -hmm. Mine is where you start. Yeah. 
as it should watch be. that and yeah. then go uh, yeah and then springboard off on that and go and hopefully that will then provide you with the context that you need to read the the more complicated mm -hmm. uh, subjects on on the wiki or or wherever when you watch the shows you'll understand the context in which they fall in in real life and whatever fictional universe that they fall into um but it wasn't my intention to do it. I started it out with like uh, four weekly episodes mm -hmm. in June of that year, which was uh, how the continuity works, mm -hmm. the way they keep reusing character names, some basics on, on the biology, protoforms, yep. sparks, and life and death and all that, and then uh, creation stories, Quintessons and Primus and, and, and all that. And um, I really didn't know where it was going to go after that. You know, I uh, I didn't have it monetized for yeah. quite some time after the launch of that or anything. Those are quite big topics when you think about it. When you see the actual, the first couple, you're like, that. those are huge, like, spanning, like, sort of guiding principles of the, the franchise in a way first. Yeah, that's... That was the thought. They would start with that, and then you know, and then then flip side took me a hundred episodes before I did Optimus Prime. You know, like, who cares about Optimus Prime? Everyone knows about Optimus <laughs> who Prime. knows. Yeah. People send me, I get the occasional comment on videos. Um, oh, do an update of Optimus Prime, and tell you what, <laughs> tell you what's changed. He's in Earth Spark now. It's one extra sentence. Yeah, yeah. Now he's in Earth Spark. He's Gavin Spence's dad. You yeah, know. well, that's a given. I don't need to mention that. Everybody knows well, that. Well, that's true, yeah. I don't want to waste people's time. I guess it's the, the basics has a limit, doesn't it? Um, yes. Do you have, like, a distinct favourite episode you've done? Oh, it changes from time to time. Um, I'm I'm still very pleased with the... Well, the Optimus one, I think, mm -hmm. still came out came out very well. Um, same for the Megatron one. Those two, two, two favourite ones. Um, the, the one about the war... Mm -hmm. I was quite happy with. Yeah. And um, some of the big... Oh, see, there's the weather. Oh, is that on your... That? We, we just got a, a... Yeah, that literally just happened outside mine as well. Like a big giant hail barrage came down. Well, hopefully the listeners will enjoy it. This is it. This is... We're truly hands across the water here. On, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, the war... Uh, Sparks. I just did... Sparks is a very recent one, but I think it came out very well. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was very pleased with how that one came out. That was a... A lot of work that one, a lot of redrafting, a lot of re-recording on that one, but I think it came out very well. I don't know. There's not one specific one I could point to, um, and I, I, you know, I do like doing the character ones, but I think the ones that the character ones always uh, follow a, a pretty recognizable structure. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, uh, it only really gets a little different if it's about a character who premiered sometime in, in anything after G one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the concept ones can take uh, can take more different turns. The ones about concepts or the ones about series, mm -hmm. they're uh, they're uh, a little. Fr and I feel like I've done like like percentage wise this year so far. I've done I feel like more than I might normally have done in the same amount of span of time of, of series and concepts and things like that so yeah. far. Do you think that's like based on? Because I, I was thinking about like in terms of like the amount. There's there's infinite possibilities for videos with mm. the basics you know this is something this that is it you could do well into your 70s you know no ste steady on now <laughs> but, i mean so it's, you're only talking what 15 years or something so i'm thinking about um thanks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no um do you do you think about that I, I, that's not i don't even have that in my questions it just popped into my head there like do you obviously we are like one of the kind of first generations of people that grew up with this marketing yeah blitz and it, we're just maybe like maybe one or two years under. Yeah, we're we're a little bit younger than people who were really cognizant of the very beginning of it because we're we're eighty two babies, aren't we? Yeah. Both of us. Yeah, yeah. So like we so missed out on. We were we were a couple of years in before we started noticing it. Yeah, for sure. In terms of like, they've had Star Wars mania, and then you go into like GI Joe, and like I kind of missed. I think before I was actually like what you would call a human being, you know, like cognizant of what was going on around me. Uh, yeah, it was probably maybe 85, something like that, mm. before I started going, these Transformers are cool. Yeah, because I can always remember my first Transformer was either mm. Snarl, the Dinobot, or Starscream, but I never remember which one it was, because one was birthday and one was Christmas. Right. But I never remember which one was which. So that is, at absolute latest, 86. Yes, yeah. Uh, but it's either 85 or 86, so I'm three or four at that point. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the first one I remember is Ultra Magnus. Like, the first one I... I, don't, I may have had some one or two before that, but the, that's the one that I can remember getting. 
And so, yeah. But I've no memory of when I first encountered the cartoon, you know? Did I yeah. know the cartoon before I had the toy? Did I get the toy because I'd seen the cartoon? Yeah. I have no idea. Certainly, no, I didn't I didn't see it on Roland Rat or anything like that, and we didn't have Sky, so yeah. like, fully yeah. all, fully videos rented from the shop was, Same. was yep. my exposure to the cartoon at, at that age. Those VHSs the with comic, the weird, almost tartan-style covers that mm, they used to have on them, the very odd designs for the, the UK uh, the VHS. tempo video yeah. ones. <laughs> the video collection. And, uh, and the comic, my first issue was oh, what was the number? Is it ninety six? Uh, it's uh, part two of Prey. You know the one where the yep. Predacons hunt Optimus, mm-hmm. and it's that one cover of all the Predacons mm-hmm. jumping forward. Yep. Oh no, I've, I've um, got. I think I've got that. So I think I, only, I recently picked up. Well, I say recently. It was at last TF Nation, so a year ago. That's recent. Uh, picked up uh, a couple, and that was one of them. Like one of the. It's just. It's just I, I always do it when I go to TFN. I've got no interest in collecting all the UK comics but i always buy like 10 of them when i'm at tfn and i, come I home. was thinking it'd be nice i, d- I mean I, I my collecting of older stuff like that the old comics mm-hmm. has been fully limited to the uh the trade paperbacks the reprints mm-hmm. but everything from dreamwave on that's you know i i've got all that physically and preserved yeah um uh but the marvels and i always think oh it'd be it'd be kind of nice to to get it all, wouldn't it? To oh have, yeah, to have a full set of all three hundred and thirty-two. If someone came up issues. to me and said, "Do you want these?" Here, have that. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know? Speaking of Dreamwave, I uh, hmm. this will never happen, right? But I did message Pat Lee. When for this? Yeah, so you get him on this. <laughs> I, was, I was really laughing when I sent it because I sent a very earnest. I would like to talk to you about this stuff, you know, blah blah blah, and I just sent it to him, and I was like, "That's so like." Uh, you're wasting both your time and theirs at this point. But <laughs> I don't think it's possible to waste Pat Lee's time because his time's worth nothing. Oh, come on. He's got a paranormal podcast now. Does he? He does. I, I keep meaning to listen to it. I'm going to... It's like, I'm, like <laughs> Imagine having a podcast as if to illustrate how oh, no. your time's worth nothing. <laughs> Trust me. If anyone knows about what their time is worth, it's me. Do you ever, uh, do you ever watch your own videos like for entertainment? I mean, like, you know, kick back with a few drinks, binge on some basics. Never for entertainment, no. <laughs> no? I do rewatch them um, uh, for context, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I'm working on something and I'm like, well, I did it. I had another character from this team before, or I did another team that's similar to this team mm-hmm. before. How did I How did I phrase it back then? You know, so, when it's something mm-hmm. that hasn't necessarily sunk into the level of repetition of some of my more recognizable phrases have i'll definitely yeah i'll go back and, and re-watch them through and see how did i how did i arrange this before and sometimes i'll come back saying yep yeah, that was a good one or sometimes i'll come back saying and then i can see how i could do that i would do that differently now yeah um you're your own worst critic aren't you you know i mean the the earliest episodes well it's you know so, some of them i've updated like like i've done updates for bumblebee and shockwave and soundwave mm. i think those are still the only yeah, those are still the only updates i've done and those are updates mm partially for all the stuff that's happened with the character since but also mm. because they were such early episodes originally i have completely mm. not completely but i have significantly changed the precise format of how i present the visuals or how i yeah. uh, present the information and um uh but updating them it results in a completely different video you know a full ground up redo mm. and then there are other ones where it's like well when the time comes to update the optimus or megatron video and i still don't know what it would take it's it's frustrating with megatron because it's like earth spark is just it's like oh wait they're still allowed to do different things now yeah <laughs> because with the last couple of years we've been in this period of unif- of brand unification where mm. earth spark really stands out as not going with the flow mm-hmm. um, I, I, it would be like one extra sentence at the end of the video and i know exactly how i would do it but the whole rest of the video i wouldn't i wouldn't need to really change anything about it same yeah. with uh, the optimus video so exactly what to update i mean this year we'll definitely get an ultra magnus update oh nice um because he said a bunch of stuff in siege and that since mm-hmm. uh, we've got the uh the has lab coming as well and um oh that's right um, yeah risking any spoilers but looks like um skybound could be up to something there too uh, um uh but uh and that's again that that was a very early video like that was ooh, that was within the first 10 i think 
uh, yeah. Magnus was. So again, that'll be a whole new video. But then there are there are other ones where I'm kind of boxing myself in, where I'm like, well, <laughs> this could notionally be updated, but it really would just be the same video again with a, yeah. a different couple of but, things stuck to the end of it, which I I'm not keen on doing. Which is why some things will just sit there and be slightly out of date forever, gnawing at the edges of my soul. <laughs> but I think that's from a creative perspective, no matter what it is you do, you look back on older work, whether it's, you know, making videos or like with me, like I'll look at old artwork or whatever and be like, God, I could do so much better now. And you realise yeah. how far you've actually come in that discipline. And I think that's really important to be able to look at that as a, as a real positive thing. But there are other times as well when you look back and and you think, oh, I wish I could get back to yeah. such and such about an older quality of work. Where because sometimes now because I'm, it's always been a, a case even from very early on where when you're on the inside, you never know. You think, but you never know for sure exactly how well you're communicating mm -hmm. the idea you want to put across in your work. And I'm talking about art here as well as, mm -hmm. well as a, a video, a piece of art, a piece of writing, whatever. In the case of me, it's technical and, you know, technical writing, exp explanatory writing. Um, and I'm like, how how clearly am I putting this across? So that's why I'm, al I, I, I'm always very thankful to hear from anybody, anybody who comes up to me at a convention or leaves a, a, a nice comment. Um, lets me know that, yes, uh, as unable as I am to tell from the inside, I'm, I'm, I'm achieving what I'm setting yes. out to do. But I do look back at some older videos and I'm like, oh, I, I see that I wasn't getting nearly as bogged down in some of the details then as I feel like I sometimes am now. Mm -hmm. I mean, the length of the videos has crept up only a teeny tiny bit because they're already short videos, which is the yeah. whole point of them anyway. But it just did break down a month or two ago. And that was over 11 minutes long. And I was like, for breakdown? Yeah. <laughs> and I, but I was looking through it and I was like, I do not, I do not see anything i can take out here yeah they surprise I mean, I just you wonder sometimes. if i'd done it. yeah that's you they really can and i do wonder if i'd done it seven years ago if it would be different or of course if it is just the accumulation of seven extra years mm. of which is well what is that that is a full extra 20 percent of time you know yeah, the characters when I started lifespan. doing it yeah you know the, so if the video does increase by by one minute that's only like a 10% increase over the normal length of the yeah, video. Yeah, so, what, so what are they complaining yeah. about then? <laughs> it's you know? me doing the complaining. <laughs> what are they complaining about these people who support you? It is uh, it is funny how, how in your own head you can get about it sometimes. Oh, though, 100%. Right? Something like that. And people just think, oh, you're just reading out the wiki or whatever. And I'm like, you you really... And I'm not going off on one about that. I mean, I can understand... I can understand why somebody would think that because there are a lot of... Um, informational channels about comics about toys mm -hmm. about cartoons where a lot of it is just uh, people without yeah. a with, perhaps with a fondness for the material but without an intimate knowledge of it mm -hmm. um do just just read out uh, or or take all their information gathered from 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 online sources and certainly you know uh, certainly bits of trivia and production information it all comes from somewhere you know so I'm not but but when it comes to actually recounting the events of the fiction Mm. That's all first-hand experience for me. I always go back to the, back to the material, back to the mm. cartoon, back to the comic or whatever, um, in order to be able to write about it. I don't rely on someone else's summary of it if it's available. You know, like when I started out, Beast Wars Second and Beast Wars Neo weren't available. We didn't have yeah. those officially subtitled when I started out, but we do now. Mm. And I have made myself watch all of those. Can't say I'd <laughs> recommend it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a, a lot of work. Uh, it does go into getting it just right. Mm -hmm. um, As you say, and... like in terms of being able to go back and look at that uh, body of work that you have and say, okay, how did I hang how did I handle the C cons here? We're going to mm. tackle this other thing that's mildly, you know, tangentially related. Let's have a look at it. Like it's good to have that sort of. I, I remember mm, years ago now, but I was doing the stunticons. I'd start. Mm. I, I started to write a video about the stunticons, and maybe it was the first. I think that was maybe the first. No, that can't be right, because the Combaticons were the first Scramble City team mm. that I did a video about. Um, maybe it was even before that. But I started writing about the Stunticons anyway. Couldn't do it, mate. Just just <laughs> couldn't get it to come together for some reason. I just yeah. was not happy. I wasn't happy with the way the information was assembling in front of me. Mm -hmm. 
And then, you know, a few years later, I guess after I'd done at least the aerial bots, I think, yeah, I think I'd done the Combaticons, the aerial bots, the Stunticons, and the Seacons, and the Terracons. Yeah, and then I eventually did the Stunticons, and I was like, what, wh- where was the challenge? Oh, if you can make the aerial bots interesting, <laughs> you know, you can do anything. Silverbolt, Slingshot, Silverbolt, Slingshot, Red Jet, Grey Jet, White Jet. But you should watch your, your videos now and again, man. I watch my videos all the time. They're fucking great. <laughs> they you know? are, you know. I watch your videos sure. all the time, too. <laughs> uh, I do go back and watch them for uh, refreshers. You know, I don't, I, don't, yeah. I don't throw them up there and then forget they existed and move on to the next one. Because, um, yeah, for, for for learning as much as anything else. Well, like, how Chris, did I do this? You know? If we don't learn from the past, we're doomed to relive Do, it, am I right? I think, you know, that's a very astute observation, Kevin. <laughs> Let's go down to pitch side and see what's happening down there. <laughs> Oh God, I, I think there's a part of me. I bought some. I, I don't know if you know my love for football comics. I don't. I had. I went. I was at a convent. I went to a convention for. Uh, you know those old Commando comics. Yeah. Like digests. I'm just gonna. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll show you these. Ooh, let's have a look. So I went to this thing. There's like three, four hundred of these, but they're like they're these things. Little Adobe books. Yeah. Square football comics. I bought ninety of them at this at the, the mart I went to, um, and I, 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 you know me, I have no interest in football whatsoever. Football comics, it's a different animal. Unbelievable how interesting it is, and I found how many people have said in the past, you know, like I've, I've got friends who I couldn't give a fuck about Transformers or they like my <laughs> enthusiasm for it, like they like my enthusiasm for Transformers, and they will watch Basics episodes because of that entry level oh that's you know, nice you, you can get into it and go you know, and you know, obviously you've got that a lovely soothing voice as well no so they, they they enjoy it but yeah it's 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 something that we get a lot with trdq stuff as well people like my partner hates transformers but they'll watch your videos oh and uh, yeah go, and i bet few gets that as well you know you, you, oh, yeah. you, you the, because he's such a nice personality as well so so full of inf- it, basically if you can do anything with genuine love and enthusiasm it seems mm-hmm. that it, it can capture the minds of people who don't particularly care about the thing i tell you what that is the perfect segue way into my next let, bit of questioning no oh boy if you want to talk about bringing enthusiasm to something that people could not give a fuck about <laughs> so You've spent a while now uh, hosting Sonic the Comic, the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I thought that might be where we were headed. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been Sonic. hosting that with uh, Dave Ballmer. Yes. And you recap the events of the UK Sonic the Comic. Uh, so in May, that will be running for five years. Five years, yes. And my question there is, that's mad, isn't it? That is mad. We we <laughs> just recorded the fifth birthday issue, and let me tell you, there was discussion about how mad it was. There's, every time there's a birthday, there's yeah. discussion about how mad it was. It's like, if either one of us had started this project independent of the other, we probably wouldn't have made it this far. I love but, that you've done it, though. Like, you're not even halfway through the run, I don't think, are you? Oh, no, we're, we're, we're more than halfway through. You're now. more than halfway uh, through the run, okay. We're... Uh, we're uh, uh, when it comes to like the original stories, because the comic goes full reprint for a while at the end. Right, yeah, when, okay. if, you, if you're including the full, the, the full reprint issues, we're maybe 15 issues past about the halfway point. Okay. okay. Um, but uh, but we're more than two thirds of the way through the the time that it prints right, original okay. stories. Two years left. Two years left. Well, it's interesting I'll... to be able to put a full stop at the end of that so yeah. far in advance, but and to know this is a finite project with an end. I was going to, so you're going. To, it's not like you're going to start reading the fucking American ones or something. We've talked about what we might do afterwards, but I don't think. But, but uh, that that doesn't seem like it's happening now. <laughs> <laughs> part of, part of the fun of STC. Now I did one episode of another podcast talking about Sonic the comic, mm. the the official Sega comic of the of the UK in mm. the 1990s, um, Fleetway as it's known by many. The mm-hmm. Sonic the Hedgehog comic, because I was mad for a bit of the old Sonic uh, mm-hmm. when I was a child in the 1990s. It basically it went Transformers, Turtles, Sonic, and um, then there was probably a couple of years we're thinking maybe Girls or something, but oh. then Digimon happened. Yeah, so it was Digimon and, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> then I got on the internet. Um, <laughs> a lot, a lot of fans did have their sort of what you'd call erotic awakening with Sonic the Hedgehog 
Do you feel that? Not com- me. Not me personally. No, no, no. But... Let's not say. Let's not say you. Let's not admit to that on the show. Um, but let's. Uh, did, did did that happen with any of the other franchises? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, can't remember that happening with Transformers or Turtles. No, no, I wasn't one of those. For me, it was uh, Silverhawks, you know. <laughs> God, you've watched some Silverhawks in the last couple of years. You go, what absolute top. rubbish. Do you know they're, they're partly metal and partly real? Partly real. <laughs> which means the, the rest, the, there's part of them which isn't real. <laughs> yeah, it's no Thundercats. Although that's it. We're, we're talking, speaking of comics and whatnot, like, so... Mm. The new Transformers comic, uh, the the Skybound book. Like, I saw you... I don't use Twitter a lot now. I use it for DMs, pretty much. Uh, but I did see your tweet about that the latest issue with the new artwork. Ooh, and yeah, I totally right, agree. Fucking blown away by it. Like, properly. Like, this is exciting. Like, the Transformers yeah. looks like this. Transformer, uh, you know, again, no slight at all oh, on any of the intensely talented people who worked on the IDW comics over the years. Ah! Worry about it? No, I like I, I followed all the IDW stuff mm-hmm. intensely closely. I I became sort of known for doing the day of release write ups for the wiki mm-hmm. of all the stuff for like the eight years from when Phase Two started up till it ended. Yeah, um, seven years. Um, but a, a lot of what the earliest IDW stuff did, um, it it all lived in the shadow of Dreamwave. Dreamwave came in there in the early 2000s at the perfect moment uh, to oh, yeah. ride the wave of anime. Everybody was into anime, and they were like, yep. make it look, make it look like paint the backgrounds and draw the figures and color the figures like they're cell shaded. Make them yep. make it look like a cartoon on paper, and it, it introduced a kind of a very um, mechanical draftsman approach mm-hmm. to uh, yeah, very much to so. st- solid, stark, straight lines. Mm-hmm. Um, that the Marvel comics never had. No, no, very uh, because much Because so. they were done by, you know, experienced uh, 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 white, what's, what's you know, just comics crafts people. Yeah, there was like um, an organic nature to it that you, you didn't yeah. get in the, I mean, there, it's not to say one is better than the other. because No, no, no. But it's, uh, yeah. Just I, different. I, I, yeah, definitely. And I think it's moving more towards that more. Mm. Well, Grungy Dreamwave had this very house style that they enforced across their work, and it did burn into the minds of a lot of people who were in their mm. 20s reading comics at the time that this is the one way Transformers can look. Mm. And uh, um, I always go back to when Dreamwave published their G.I. Joe miniseries, their mm. G.I. Joe Transformers World War II crossover miniseries, and it was trailed with um, images of Don Figueroa's character designs, of the characters all redesigned into World War II vehicles. And then the issue comes out, and it's by Jay Lee, who has no interest in any of that. He's here to create a moody art piece. Yeah. They're all and, in and silhouette everybody, anyway. And, yeah. <laughs> and everybody rejected that. Yeah. No, for sure. Uh, I mean, because... don't get me wrong. I thought it was cool as hell at the time, but that's because oh, I was me like too. early 20s. It wasn't, as you say, the perfect time to just be like, I remember Transformers. I still quite like Transformers. Yeah. It's, it's for um, big boys now. And when EJ Sue uh, started mm-hmm. up in uh, in IDW, uh, he was doing some very mecha, you know, it, it was it was the same uh, uh, through line of thought. He had very particular mecha designing. A lot of people mm-hmm. said, is, you know, they had very Gundam legs on all his Transformers. Yeah, yeah. But, like, for a lot of people, it wasn't the right, you know, people pushed back against his stuff mm-hmm. even then. Um, because it didn't look like an anime on paper the way the Dreamwave stuff tried to look mm. like. Um, and I remember what a breath of fresh air more than meets the eye felt like when it mm. came out, when it finally did something. It wasn't it wasn't about um, cell shaded coloring, well, not cell shading, you know, but yeah. but it, it was a, it was a pastel color palette that was mm. unlike anything Transformers had looked like before. And Alex Milne uh, pushed all the, uh, one of the most dream wave guys still working in Transformers comics at that point in time, mm-hmm. who, who most directly continued the visual style of those comics, totally had to push everything he was doing out to extremes to follow in the in the mold of what Nick Roach laid down on the first mm-hmm. issue of that. Yeah. And Phase 2 helped broaden the visual language of what Transformers comics are. Uh, mm-hmm. So we got things like Saren Stone's Windblade or, or Sarah Petra de Roche. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Things that just looked different, things that were able to be a bit different, but they did all still lean. Not so much Saren Stone's, actually, to be fair. 
but they did only do four issues, five mm. issues in the, in the grand scheme of thing in the end of it all. Um, maybe maybe half a dozen. Um, but it did still all tend to lean towards that very neat draftsmanship of mm. of clear, bold lines. And no, I knew before Skybound even started. I've been saying it since before Skybound launched uh, that this is Transformers comics by comics creators not Transformers comics by Transformers comics creators. Right, yeah. and that is a that it's a silly sounding sentence, but it's a very real thing. Yeah, because um, I mean, all the other people I've just mentioned, like they all came up out of Transformers fandom, mm-hmm. um, with with a certain amount of like influence, inspiration, mm-hmm. and learning from everything that had gone before them. But here's Daniel Warren Johnson booting the door off and going, "I'm going to draw the old cartoon robots the way I draw." Yeah. And it's and better and, for it, and not not to say yeah. better than what came before, but I think no, it needed a refresh in terms of how it was handled. <clears throat> when someone takes over something like that, it's an either new start. You need something that is visually distinct, and I think they've they've done that, especially with that latest issue. I was like, it's like I was, you know, like, I thought Johnson would be a hard act to follow, mm-hmm. but I that first page on issue yep. seven with Jorge Corona stuff, I was, I I I out loud went, whoa. Mm-hmm. On you know, that I panel of Huffer and shooting. I mean, it is Huffer, is my boy, you know, but. <laughs> but I got big uh, senior vibes off it. Yes, the, in the um, the kineticism of it. Yeah, the, um, so dynamic. The, 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 the blotchiness sometimes of the. Because, uh, mm. you know, as a kid, I wasn't a senior fan, uh, right. which when I think back, that seems demented now. But as a kid, I, there was something about the the very angular nature of the way he drew the robots that um, I just didn't vibe with. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember the... I had the annual. Which annual is it? It's the one with the Magnificent Six in it that reprints the two parts of Fallen Angel. Yes, you get one yeah. part, uh, one part senior, one part Anderson. Mm-hmm. And I always remember thinking as a kid when I had the annual that I liked Anderson's stuff more. Yeah. But I look back on it now and I am like, what in God's name was I talking about? K- kids uh, are stupid, the, the man. The sheer kineticism <laughs> of, of senior art as compared to how Anderson's stuff had a great tendency to look very posed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very um, static not, in, yeah. in places, mm-hmm. even in big action shots. That's, I've, never, I've never been a huge fan, uh, but I think that like senior just brings, as you say, there's a dynamism, a kinetic energy mm-hmm. to all, and that you can see that in the inspiration for all the, even the stuff in the first the first arc as well, like in terms of oh, yeah. the the <clears throat> the amount of focus that's put on velocity, you yes. know, and then being able to in movement and yeah, that that's very cool. So it's, a, it's something to me that feels very fresh, even if people are complaining. You know, it's just old Transformers again. Like I think it's kind well, of that's, proven... that's something I said as well. It's like you know, people do have had that reaction. Um, oh, it's just the Sunbow models, and my thought was, well, yes, of of course it is, because <laughs> it's a. It is a uniquely Transformers brained thought to even have. Oh, do you know what I'll do? I'll redesign the entire cast. <laughs> you know, that's something only a Transformers fan uh, and somebody who'd come out of of working on those comics for that length of a time and had that upbringing would even think to do. Mm-hmm. If you start, if you become the new artist on Spider Man, your first thought is not, "I'm going to redesign Spider Man's costume," is it? Yeah. Yeah, although well, I sometimes would. people do it, but you know, <laughs> I mean, I would. I'd give them it. It'd be horrible as well. It'd be a terrible costume. The uh, no, I think I, I, I'm really quite enjoying it. I did not expect to be enjoying it nearly as much uh, either. Even in terms of not just not just the artwork either. Like I'm enjoying the actual thrust of the story so far. Mm. It's a story about something. And Transformers comics aren't. Oh, and this is again not a slide, but they're not often about things. Mm-hmm. But but Johnson is writing a story that's very much about fathers and death. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, as as he's, like Optimus Prime being my dad, uh, yes. it hit me particularly hard. Um, I mean that that's that's this is an absolute all timer depiction of Optimus Prime in this comic. Half oh, a dozen issues in already. Yeah, well, the, the, that's I, I saw it a lot online, but I did when reading it, thinking about it, especially you know people people were kind of taking the piss out of the scene where he kills the little deer. How could you take the piss out of it? I mean, it is just okay. It's just the Iron Giant, but still. Yeah, exactly. But exactly. But like, who's to say that that's not still affecting? And everyone, I've seen people going, "That that's that's Optimus Prime, right there. That's not, you know, when you, you can see all the different depictions in movies and stuff, which still mm-hmm. turns my stomach, to be honest. But the um, we've been through I... a funny time with Optimus the last decade, decade and a half, you know, because we had the the Prime and we had the aligned continuity, and it's 
vision for Optimus as a mythic hero, mm-hmm. like genuinely like a reincarnation of a great of a god of a great mm-hmm. of one of a great pantheon of heroes from the planet's past, living up to a, a, a mythic preordained destiny, yeah. and how that went hand in hand with the return of Peter Cullen uh, to the role outside the films, mm-hmm. and a very real identifiable tendency to write Prime's dialogue in a way that lent into that mm. big constant speechifying and use of three dollar words. Yeah. And he be- and he became more an idea than he did a character. Mm-hmm. Not very much and, so like um, this, this is the first well not the, uh, there's certain things I've found that I really like like um Cyberverse did it with Yes. You see that that episode where Optimus has to give is is at a party and he's really uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, brilliant. He's he's a he's a he's a character now. Like he's not. And it, and it grows out of the fact that they turned him into this idea, mm-hmm. and, and that's yeah. you know it's what uh, what uh, John Barber did in uh, in the IDW, the Robots in Disguise, and Optimus Prime comic mm-hmm. as well. It was an active exploration of what of like the idea of being a Prime, and you know what that what it means for the character. It was a deconstruction. Yeah, of, when you get to the core of it, how does that affect someone? A, a man. And I don't know if you can necessarily draw a direct line, but you can draw a general line, and a trajectory of the handling of Optimus Prime in this decade, where he got turned, he got reshaped to be an idea, there mm. was a deconstruction of the idea, and now we have things like Earthspark and Skybound, where he's allowed to be a character again. Yeah, for sure. And that's what, I, you just want them to be... I, Obviously, archetypes are very uh, appealing, you know. So you can look at certain things and say, "Who's your favorite Transformer?" Oh, Optimus Prime. He's fucking great. You know, it's the same thing with Megatron, etc. You know, they're, they're perfectly valid answers to give Optimus Prime or Megatron as, yeah. as your thing, but they can get very dull and predictable. And I'm just very glad that we're out of that now. And I think that's why I liked Animated so much as well. Because yeah, I mean, Animated was the last big hurrah of being of. It was the end of the wilderness years, as it were, because mm. the 2000s were an odd time for Transformers when you had R.I.D. and then you had the Unicron trilogy mm. and then animated on the hit where, where everything, a name did not necessarily mean anything from series to series. It was total free-for-all reinvention of most yeah. things about Transformers. And then animated came in like at the end of that decade and it was like ultimate transformers Mm -hmm. or or something like that where it was like it it was genuinely about taking ideas from everything that had gone before it and rolling Mm -hmm. them up together to create something that was new very new but also paid owed a lot of what it was to the past in a way that say the unicron trilogy didn't yeah and um and yeah, and then the then archetypes really took over, or you know, brand synergy. If you want to be more cynical about it, is really An evergreen uh, approach. Yeah. To... This is it. This is what happened in the in the in the two thousand tens. But it's it's like yeah, we have sort of now come out of the back end of that because the the align we no longer try to put everything within one universe after the aligned thing. I don't like I don't like to say died ended, you know, mm. um, because the people involved moved around were fired whatever you yeah. know project projects come projects go um but then we you know we had to go through uh i don't know, say had to like it was a chore but you know cyberverse happened and that mm-hmm. was very much um uh sort of like baby's first idw it was like idw and the line sort of super collided into yeah uh, and g1 just uh, and uh, that and that went hand in hand with um uh, the arrival of uh, the War for Cybertron trilogy, which was a, a really, uh, I mean, well, you probably remember, Gav. We were in a we were in a bar in in um, in Scotland when you and you brought uh, uh, Siege Optimus. Oh yeah. And I was saying I just really couldn't see myself buying any of the new Siege toys mm-hmm. because it's just the same characters again. That yep. that was my that was my point that I'd reached where I was like, it's oh, just sure. another Optimus, and 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 you had that Siege Optimus, and I had handled it and i was like oh shit no actually this is amazing this is a yep. this is a fantastic toy and i went all in on it um but it did go that happened and cyberverse happened and um the bumblebee movie happened even with its little mm-hmm. two minute thing stuck on the start which is very much about that reset and then and then we've had earthspark come along and, and say no and now where we've moved on past that again yep. where we're, we've reached a point where the um the, the the big ideas laid down by the 
aligned continuity the the, the broad strokes history the, the the 13 the golden age optimus and prime uh, being friends and then their mm. falling out being the inciting incident of the war colonies and all that that is now the um spider bites peter parker that is the gamma bomb explosion that is the wayne's shot in an alley of transformers <laughs> yeah and and you can take that and then you can go off in whatever direction you need to and we've got you know uh, transformers one coming up now which again we still don't know very much about no but uh is rooted in this base idea that optimus prime and megatron were once friends in a in an unfair socially stratified golden age mm. And fell out, and they fell out when they disagreed over how best to bring equality to their planet. Even though it looks again like it is going to be taking a a different approach to it. Uh, I think like the one thing we maybe know about it is that both Prime and Megatron in this one are both laborers instead yeah. of being from different classes of society. So I think that's like. Do you think that the Mega obviously Megatron has a different? They use Megatron very differently to Optimus. He's more interchangeable in terms of how they approach that character. So, like, well, that's, the, that's but... again, he was for a long time, mm. and then he wasn't for a while in the period we're talking about now, mm. right around those mid two thousands when, uh, when uh, um, Cyberverse mid to late two thousands when Cyberverse was happening, mm. and uh, and the, the Prime Wars were happening, and then uh, uh, the War for Cyberdrome was happening. It was like, right, we've settled on it. Megatron is a grey tank. That's yeah. it. That's what he is now. <laughs> yeah. Remember that stuff just a few years ago when we were having when we were turning him into Galvatron in the films or whenever yeah. uh, he was turning into an Autobot in the comics. Right, that's the past. We have resolidified what Megatron is again. And then Earthspark came along, and it was like not so not so fast. Yeah. Not only we is can he going still to be... do more with Megatron than we do with Optimus. Yeah, exactly. And you can like, you, is he going to be? Uh, what's he going to be this time? I don't know. A kind of helicopter, maybe. And is he going to? And is he going to have a consistent uh, accent? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Like that's the last thing we need to worry about. But yeah, like that idea that you can take those characters, like again, like Megatron, and just be like, they could be a good guy now to an extent. And I wonder if they're now. It's sort of like the character so popular now, people want to like them. Like it's like a wrestler turning face. Oh, it's well, like, that's a funny thing about that. That's a, a funny quality Transformers has. Mm -hmm. uh, where um, the baddies are on totally equal footing, like popularity-wise, with the goodies, as it were. Yeah, it's not a unique like... quality to Transformers, but... I, like I remember that Soundwave guy, which... you know? I, 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 um, what's the most recent example of it, I guess? Um, pro probably the Devastation video game. Remember when it came out? Oh, yeah, <clears> yeah. And people... and Or the um, even the Armada game, what, 15, 20 years before that? Mm -hmm. Um uh, and people would go, you mean I can't play as the Decepticons? And <laughs> yeah. it's like, but stop and think. Like Again, it goes back to what I was saying about Skyman. It's such a uniquely Transformers brand thought. Mm. You mean I can't play as the baddies? Yeah, like, no, what? of course you can't. <laughs> no, no, I think like... But that was something that uh, War for Cybertron, War for Cybertron games yeah. understood. Yeah, you could play as Autobots and Decepticons in those games because they came from that school of thought. Yeah, that, that's so interesting, that. like, that idea. I wonder if that's, like, with Transformers 1, I always think with it, when it comes to the... I think when it comes to the whole, like, as you say, they have this society that's unfair and unjust, and Megatron is actually just fighting for, you know, he's basically like a trade union rep mm. with a murderous streak. <clears throat> and that doesn't absolve him of anything, but it does kind of take the edge off the sort of maniacal element of it. Mm. In which they I mean, try and... you know, and there are discussions to be had that I don't think either you or I really want to get too deep into on no. this light show no. about how problematic necessarily it is to depict uh, uh, the the murderous arch villain of all Transformers as a, a leftist who was fighting for equality for his people, and then it went too far. Yeah, and then it, that it, it could happen so easily. They say says this multi billion dollar corporation who's at the head of all of this. <laughs> But yeah, yes, well, like that's it, isn't it? Well, yeah. Well, I think like if we're we're coming to the end of the show now, Chris. There's no point in even pretending we're not, you know. Um, Fair and, enough. And I could go on. <laughs> well, this well, this is it exactly. I, again, we were because Nick Roche wouldn't fucking shut up, you know. Oh, what's he like? And I was just like, is that just an Irish thing? And then I got to the the, uh, the the I want to get into the fan favorite section of the show. Mm. This is hugely popular. Um, where I ask you about who your favorite transformer is. Now, 
I'm going to ask you in a section called "What TF are you talking about?" It can be a toy that character. Good. Took me a second. Took me a second. I like that. I wanted to call the show something around that, and then I realised there already was like a WTF Transformers podcast. But um, they don't yeah, really, right. they don't really use it in that way, in the clever way that I'm using it, you know. But yeah, it can be a toy, a character on a show, anything. And the listeners to this show, Chris, they can do fuck all about that. <laughs> they just got to sit back and listen to me talk. Exactly. That's all. They've got no choice but to just engage with this. So. Who's your favourite Transformer? Or what is your favourite Transformer? It makes me wish I had a, a really nice cut and dried answer. But I don't have a character like, you know, a lot of people have like shrines where they they got to collect every piece of merchandise of their one favourite character or they always, um, there you go. Moving There's up there. Ultra Magnus shelf Ultra right Magnus. there. <laughs> but, and I yeah. don't, I don't have that, you know? Um, okay. And I, and, uh, uh, there's there there's a point like mentally I think and I reached it right around siege and then I'd sort of adjust my thinking again where you just have so many of these robots at some point mm. that you're like I can't buy all the <laughs> all the ones of a dude yeah <clears throat> that that happens though, all... like I, I looked in at, um I did a video on I was like I'm gonna do a video where I cover like dead end and I've got like I must have like two or three dead ends and I had like seven. <laughs> yeah, and you guys didn't realize I had so many dead end toys. That's stupid. It's actually stupid to have that many <laughs> dead. <laughs> um, and uh, you know, with uh, with what I do, like on YouTube, and what I've been doing on on mm. the wiki for all so many years beforehand, um, the nature of it, um, moving from topic to topic to writing about character to character to character, there is an element of sort of constant rediscovery in it as well. Where when you sit down to write about it and you rewatch this, that, or reread this, that, or the other, and and you 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 get an appreciation for the character that you maybe didn't have before, or you mm -hmm. rediscover before, and it's why you know I'll always you'll always reliably find that I have whoever that is sitting next to me on the desk at the time if I own that. The new, that's not the new one, is it? No, that's not the new Magmatron, but oh. well, the fact that, the fact that it's a little difficult to tell over video on a podcast <laughs> speaks to a whole other thing about the direction of Transformers at the moment. <laughs> we probably don't have time to get into. Um, but yeah, that's why he's sitting. He's just sitting next to me on the desk at the minute because I recently finished doing his um, his video. Yeah, um, that that was a fun one to show my wife and say, "Look at this guy," and she's like, "Look what, what, at what, the state that? of him." Yeah, like what the, is that? Is that a transformer? Is is that the thing you like? That's that what you're into? <laughs> <laughs> That's what you like, is That's it? what you like, eh? Oh That's God. one of the great things about Transformers is though anything can be a transformer. You know, mm -hmm. the the sheer we were talking earlier on about how comics got kind of pigeonholed into a certain uh, visual language of depicting transformers for a while mm -hmm. there that we're really only breaking out of now. But um if you look at the sheer diversity of the visual representation of what a transformer is visually and physically allowed to be. And I don't yeah. mean be in terms of alternate mode. It's, it's ridiculous to think that that, that, that <laughs> lives in yeah. the same toy line as that. You know, <laughs> that's completely different. These two are completely yeah. different things. Anyway, the answer is Omega Supreme. Um, <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I got off the point. The there. junction of your destruction? I uh, uh, Omega Supreme tends to be the answer I give when I um, pose that question. But again, yeah, as I say, I don't have like a shrine of all this stuff. Um, and although you may quote the Marvel comic because that is one of his coolest all-time moments, mm -hmm. it was mostly his role in the key to Vector Sigma in the right. cartoon that gave yeah. me my childhood love of him. Um because that was one that I wasn't able to rent from the shop that often. So anytime I could ever see it, it felt more special. It was always, is this the one? No, this is Megatron's master plan again. I'm not watching <laughs> that, that rubbish. Always, that one was always there. They never had the key to Vector Sigma half the time. And um, it's that bit at the end where he comes back and goes, uh, repairs complete, Omega <laughs> Supreme. That one, that, that really lived with me for one reason or another. He's um, good. Like he, like I think he's, that he's a good big boy. He's got more personality than you'd credit him having mm. in the show, at least. And I, you know, I never saw the secret of Omega Supreme when I was young, but I remember when the uh, when the second season two part two DVD came out, mm. 
I was like, oh, f- f- fuck watching this in order. I'm putting this episode <laughs> on first. I've always wanted to see this one. Yeah, I want to know the secret. Big orange child in it. I want to know what his secret is. <laughs> so he's the, he's the answer I tend to give. But, you know, they're... they're um, Rat Bat, because I liked bats when mm-hmm. I was a kid, and Buddy Ansky's turn on him was great, you know, yeah. defining stuff. Um, and then, yeah, as you say, as you were saying earlier on about how, yes, Megatron and Optimus are, obvi- are obvious but perfectly viable answers. Definitely Soundwave. Like, who doesn't love Soundwave? Oh, yeah, for sure. And um, Rumble, by extension, I've always just liked that little punk personality that he has in the cartoon. Um, Rhinox is another one, another longtime favorite. Um, so I, yeah, uh, Omega Supreme is my stock answer, mm-hmm. but I, I, but I'm not the kind of guy who's so fully committed to one character that I have a shelf. Yeah. So I do have lots of like, there's 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 a swirling storm of them, you know. I, c- I can't not ask you now. You mentioned them. What's uh, what colors Rumble? I got a stock answer for this one too. Don't worry, <laughs> Gav. The head says that Rumble is red, but the heart says that Rumble is blue. It's the right answer. You got it right. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you win a TRDQ Repugnus Glow in the Dark badge. Wee! I'll get one out to you for that answer. <laughs> Roche didn't get one. Well, he didn't give the right answer. Oh, some of the answers he gave were so wrong. <laughs> but you know no thank you for that Chris and thank you so much for giving your time to talk to us on the Secret Hot Top, Top podcast I'll learn to say the podcast name eventually well that comes later thank you very much for having me on Gav I was very much looking forward to it oh no thank you and again like I think that uh, it's nice to for people to see another side of you like before in fact before we go I think like because th- the reason I mentioned that is because you're kind of known as the sort of what would you say the hard man of Transformers oh, yeah, fandom. Yeah, yeah. Like, how did that come about? And uh... <laughs> I think people misunderstand my size. Yes. Or we're, we're, we're both large gentlemen. That's true. Uh, yes. That's true. Uh, tall, that is to say, folks. Well, you're, both, t- you're uh, tall and I am white. Well, we're about the same. You know. <laughs> no, no, no. I got a been going on myself. <laughs> no, we're both we're about, both about the same height. We're both about 6'4", aren't we? Yeah, say around that. I, I can't. So see, I, I used to say six seven, but I think now that I'm like forty, I must have shrunk like two inches or at least. <laughs> you know. But I think people do find that uh, people are often taken aback by how tall I am in real mm-hmm. life. I don't project hard man energy <laughs> on the internet, <laughs> es- especially when you like if you're at if you're at a table at an event and you stand up <laughs> and it just and it keeps going. You know, <laughs> they would shrink back in fear. <laughs> the shadow just looming over their face. But uh, like, well, in fact, yeah, because you you were at the TFN Minicon there, yeah. I was, yes. How did that go? Because I didn't get to go. It went well. It was uh, the new venue was good, a little mm-hmm. more uh, spacious, higher ceilings, just room to room to breathe, room to spread out. It helped to really make it feel like a a, a small uh, TF Nation as compared to the different layout of the previous year's Minicon. Mm-hmm. I thought. Um, good, good setup for the uh, the panel space as well. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was a great little time. Good, 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 good fun. Good day. Do you get the respect you deserve when uh, uh, from the fans? The thing that's good about the minicon is uh, m- my time is my own at it. Uh, that's not you know being being unappreciative in any way because uh, you know believe you me, uh, it is it can be very it's very flattering and very mm-hmm. humbling and very rewarding yeah. to speak with and engage with so many people who enjoy your work mm-hmm. at TF Nation. But I do approach the the full three day event in August with a certain mindset and a knowledge that my time is not my own at that mm-hmm. during like the the hours of the convention. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of handshaking and and yep. talking and and then and, and, and it's the same for yourself, of course, too, uh, and mm. and the responsibilities that we have to the convention itself, whether it's hosting a panel or uh, or uh, running a table or whatever, mm. you know, it is it is to a certain extent work. Yeah, um, yeah, oh, yeah. But yeah. the the mini con is just a day trip. So, mm. oh no, I think that's a good way to approach it. Yeah, I think that's like uh, I, when I look at it, like I I love dearly love going to TFN. And being on the TMUK table and talking to people, and but it is you know th- those two days that you do it, it's it's a shift you put in. Yeah. Oh yeah. You've you got to be in a in a headspace. Yeah. You, know? you got to be like you know when people come up and they're like, oh, I love your stuff, and I go, Argh! 
just give them a bit of a fright. That's great. You know. Now I have I have ten years of uh, comics retail, so I'm very used to having to interact on a daily basis with nerds. nerds. Yeah, nerds. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah well, I'll use the word. You know, it's uh, taking it back. We are ones ourselves, Gavin, or I am at least. <laughs> well, I don't listen, know. maybe I've just offended the host here, uh, but um, <gasps> uh, yeah, you know, I uh, so I am. Um, I know how to approach that with with a with a mindset with be to be in a work mode mm -hmm. uh when it comes to um putting in a shift as you yeah, say yes. but it never comes across as as you know that it doesn't come across as you're uh, oh yeah you're not doing it out of any obligation or anything because yeah. we're very lucky to be in the position where we have uh people come come up to us and say that they enjoy our work oh yeah still i still don't quite believe it when someone's like, I'll be talking to someone, will come up to the table and they'll be looking at stuff and I'll start talking to them and they go, wait a minute. Are you? You're that Nick Roche? guy. You're Nick Roche, aren't you? And they go, no, that's my dad. <laughs> but I am uh, just as good. But not like, well, thank you Chris, so much for coming on the show. We will get your badge out to you, of course. Way. Uh, and uh, if you see me wearing it in the street, you can stop me. And you'll know I'm a TRD cure. <laughs> exactly. I can't really think of I'm a it. good. Uh, I'm TR a TRDQ. I'm I'm like a I'm a TRD a T a, a DQ head or something. A, 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 a TRD head. A DQ or head. A yeah, there's yeah, something, something there. Something like that. Yeah. That's good. Like there's something that. there in there. Yeah. It's Bunch. like I wanted to start calling my fans basics bitches, but I think that's too far over the line. <laughs> it's definitely a possible Patreon tier. <laughs> You yeah. know, like, I mean, I, I was wanting to do the when someone had mentioned to me when I started the Patreon, and they said, "Oh, you got a friend of Repugnus is the only tier." It was like I thought you would have called it the the hot tub, the uh, secret hot tub, and I was like, "Shit, I fucking should have." <laughs> well, that no, that's got to be like the 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 next tier up, doesn't it? Because you got your one tier, but yeah. then the secret hot tub has to be something else. Yeah, that you have to get special access to that other people can't. Not safe for work content. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just one I mean, video. None of this is safe for work, right? Oh, yeah, God, none of this is making it in. Well, <laughs> um, Chris, where can people find you and your work on the internet? Yes, uh, you'll find me on YouTube. Uh, I'm probably popping up in the end card of this video if algorithms are working the way they should. Uh, it's just my name, Chris McFeely, or search for Transformers The Basics on YouTube, and you'll find my channel there with. Yeah, uh, over 230-some episodes of The Basics itself and a few other odds and sods besides that as well. Um, the aforementioned Sonic the Comic the Podcast, which we definitely didn't spend near enough time talking about because I'm, I'm very grateful to have that show and it be something other than Transformers. Mm -hmm. You do start to... Um, maybe you find this yourself, Gab, but you do start to worry about your identity being subsumed by your content sometimes. Yeah. That and, you know, and you just be... A Transformers guy or something. Yeah, you know? even though, like, obviously when you put up a video and it's not Transformers, it never does as well. Tell me about it. But <laughs> I also then just have to realise that's not my fault. It's the fault of my viewers. Yeah. Who should Broaden fucking your horizons. grow up. <laughs> oh, you should watch. I watch the I watch TRDQ because, you know, I like the, the, the way it's done and the way it's handled and it's handled with fun. Do you think you're not going to have a good time watching a video just because it's fucking... Power Rangers or wrestling videos grow up. <laughs> I'm so. about to drop a video that I very much hope that 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 sentiment will be true for as well. So I, I do really enjoy having something that could not really be further removed from what people expect of me as a Transformers content creator. Yeah, um, a silly podcast talking about a 30 year old comic <laughs> about a. Sonic the Flippin' Hedgehog, <laughs> but it, it, is, it, is, it is a comic that uh, was very important to a generation of people in the UK that has been unfairly and misrepresented by the flattened global internet, mm -hmm. the way that, you know, uh, uh, global nostalgia is American nostalgia because oh, of yeah. the internet and the way it all gets flattened down, and the Sonic the comic has has spent a lot of time not receiving its fair shake. So this is a podcast that approaches Sonic the comic as a cultural artifact. We look at all the ads mm -hmm. and all the news. It is fully going back to 1990 and trying to explain what it was like 
being that age in the 1990s reading this comic and trying to make you understand why it was as important as it is and like how do you remember all that though it's not as if any of you were like writing down what was happening day to day back then or Mm, that's something we have on there (laughs) Uh, but uh, it, it, we we seem to have you know struck a note where we get uh, we get letters from people, people rediscovering the comic, people happy to see people talking about the comic for the first time, and it does feel like there's been a bit of a, a resurgence in interest in the comic. You can't swing a cat without hitting fan comics and things now this yeah. past year or two. No, for um, sure. Yeah, and no, that's uh, cool though. I think that's the like as you say like the. It happened a lot with video games as well. Like people always talk about, you know, in the early the eighties, crash. the big crash, and no one played video games. And like, no, in the UK and in yeah. Europe, it was huge. Still, like we, you know, we didn't fuck it up over here. <laughs> very different markets, very different thing. And and you know, I'm I'm sure that example in particular has come up in our old man mithering on this <laughs> podcast about the state of young people. <laughs> uh, so if that sounds appealing to you. <laughs> You can find that at stctp.zone. Or, you know, you can just be like a normal person and type it into a podcast app and find it that way. Yeah, yeah. I find a lot, of, since we started this, people like, can you send me the the feed? Or like the XML? <laughs> like, the no. RSS. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. No, just type the name of the podcast in your podcast app. It'll find it. Yeah. No, I, I think that like we spoke about it recently before about the uh, when I was like we could you know to rip off Sonic the comic the podcast for the UK Transformers comic, mm. and then you start reading the Transformers UK comic and you're like I don't know if I could do a podcast about this. <laughs> no, I mean I've seriously you know thought about it and talked through it, but yeah, it's uh, part part of it is we are just a tiny bit young, just mm-hmm. just a couple of years, but just a tiny bit young for a lot of the ads to really mean anything to us the way that a lot of the stuff that's advertised in something from the 90s really burrowed into our brains Mm -hmm. when they were in a more open and receptive state. Um, And also, God love Marvel UK and the Mm -hmm. way they had to make their comics. But a 22-page story randomly split in half in the middle (laughs) is not the way to read those stories. (laughs) Yeah, a yep. twenty-two page story split into five four-page parts and stuck in as a backup is not the way those stories were ever written as a, to be experienced as a piece of art. Yeah, and it's really hard to recommend anybody actually go back and do it that way. Yeah, I feel like it'd be, there'd be a constant thing in the show where it would be, and then it just cuts off. Yeah, and it would just be that and every you episode. You couldn't properly discuss a set of eleven pages as a unit of storytelling because yeah. it's not. It is actively only half of the story. Yeah, you don't have like a cliffhanger to talk about or look forward to next issue. I want to see what happens. You're just going to be, yeah, you're going to be effectively. We'll find out next time. Yeah. Like, oh, but yeah, that, I think that's that, the good thing about the, like the with this, you know, the Sonic stuff is it tends to uh, there are episodic parts and things like that, but mm. it's written with that in mind. Yeah, you know, and the comic comes out uh, the podcast rather the podcast comes out every two weeks, just like the comic did in sync with the real life dates that the comic came out back in the 90s so when it's easter we got an easter issue when it's yeah. when it's halloween we got a halloween issue when when christmas happens it's the christmas issue and whenever the comic celebrates its birthday so do we which is yeah. coming up at the end of may our fifth birthday with a very special that. guest oh, a special guest mm. well no spoilers okay that's fine <laughs> uh, but I think that the the, spe- the thing that I like about it as well is that like it's things like that like they kind of it's geared up it's we're, we're you know we're sticking to those same that same release schedule and dates, but also like the effort that even like your co-host Dave will go to with the music. Oh, stuff. Dave! I mean, I am so lucky to be doing that show with Dave. <laughs> His editing and the amount of work that he puts into editing that and including all the the music and the jingles and the commercials and all the stuff that really makes it a a time capsule of of the stuff we're talking about. I'm so lucky to be doing it with a man as talented and dedicated as he is. Well, let's not go mental, but uh, when it comes to... (laughs) No, like David put up a tweet about it because he is incredible at this stuff and it was like about um, when when you get... When you mention like a game or you put out like... You know, you'll maybe put the music in the background, but he doesn't just lift music from somewhere. Like, you'll try and find versions of it, perhaps, that people haven't heard, or try and find different things to make it more visually interesting and provide a texture that wasn't there before. And I think, like, that amount of incredible effort... Again, like, it's... 
when we, we when I spoke to to Nick Roche about the like the Marvel comics, like you know people have put their stamp on it creatively, like Jeff Senior or mm. uh, you know Simon Furman. That could have been anything really. It could have been fucking Mask. It could have been, you know, they would have just been doing this this gigging, you know, thing. Yeah. Uh, but to, for you to bring something like that, that you know, let's say, because you know, I read Sonic the comic, but I don't have like a huge amount of nostalgia for it. But I still listen to the show because it's put together with such kind of affection and love, and you getting exasperated at times. Yeah, I mean, you got to take him down a peg. That's why I got to take him down a peg in the show, or whatever, love it. because he's he he puts so much hard work into it, you know. But but also, have you listened to the show? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, man. So you know, you really get like, uh, okay, well, I'm going to get the diary out, and you're just like, oh no, oh, Jesus, here we go. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, I, just, I made the point earlier on. I don't think actually, I think I forgot to finish what I was saying much mm. earlier in the show when I said I'd been on a, a one episode of a podcast that was oh, meant yeah. to be the start of a new uh, podcast talking about Sonic the comic, which is called Speed Reading, which is a flipping fantastic title. That is we're good. furious that that had been taken already. <laughs> you know, one of the things that delayed us from launching the show for a long time was we could come up with a good title well you, and, how, and how did you land on the name uh, sonic, sonic the, the comic. comic the podcast yeah it was real real man i said to go into that uh but that podcast um talked about a couple of sonic stories in that first episode right uh and, you know it was, a, it was a fun time but when dave and i started talking about this i said to dave i have one condition on doing this which is it's one episode one issue and we talk about everything in it yeah because that's great though like that's half the fun of like got, reading it, these it's, things it's not it's what you want it's like whenever people talk about it online who are reading scans of it or whatever and they just read the sonic strip and um, and maybe they come away unimpressed or regardless of what impression they come away with of the content of the sonic stories themselves mm-hmm. you're still not getting the whole picture you know un- you don't you're not understanding the what it was like to read it and that is what stctp is about for us yeah, as you like, say it's like a time what capsule. was it like yeah, that's, that's the STCTP thing. Like, dot zone. Well, I, I can I cannot recommend it enough. And much like me, when I'm reading these old like Transformers comics, and you go, "Oh, remember fiendish feet?" <laughs> yes, you know. Or, <laughs> oh shit, remember Saint Weetabix? I- there were always lots of Weetabix ads. Tons of Weetabix ads. There was a lot of Saint Ivel going on. You know, things like that. It was just yeah, and it adds so much to it. To, for me, anyway, just to to miss those out in scans. Like I tried to find. I, I got a, a very embarrassing for me now, but I got my letter printed in Spawn when I was like eighteen. Ooh, well, of course you were eighteen. Where I was a, a a a real prick, and I'm trying to find it through scans, but they cut out all the letters. Ah, oh, shame, shame. And I just wanted to find it to laugh at because I'm like, I'm, it's a proper like, you need to get Spawn back to its roots, or you might be losing <laughs> a reader. <laughs> One of those kind of efforts where you're just a dickhead who knows nothing. That um, is one reason you should go to stctp.zone then, because um, we uh, there have been scans of Sonic the Comic online for 20 years. Mm-hmm. They're all a bit crap because they were made 20 years ago, yeah. and they cut out the, a lot of the posters and the, and the ads and things. Um, but our webmaster is undergoing... Uh, 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 he's just got really into Sonic the Comic. <laughs> he was already Dave's pre-existing uh, uh, web, web guy, mm. and uh, he helped set us up our, our site. Um, but as a consequence of the podcast, he's just got really into Sonic the Comic, yeah. and he is undertaking a task of rescanning it all good this time with the ads. Oh. And those scans are all hosted uh, with each new episode. So if you want to see all the ads and stuff, they're all on, on the website. And that STCTP. makes a so. huge difference to me in terms of like, because so, I, I, it depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes if I'm listening to the show, I will read it beforehand, or maybe I'll go back and read it. But like again, mm. as you say, it's difficult when there aren't good scans. And Especially when you're talking about yeah, you know, like the letters pages or the or the or like fan art or something like that, uh, being having the ability to look at it and watch yeah, kind of experience it along with you makes a huge difference. So that's really cool. Like that's that's a, a as you say, a reason to go to the to the site as well. Jeez, oh, well, we we'll, we we'll can have you on again. I know the length of time I'm going on, right? It could fill a whole second episode. At first, I wanted to get these podcasts done quick. Hmm. You know, uh, it's in the name. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to get them done quick in terms of, you know, there are little like half hour things. And then I realized I actually just really like talking to my pals about this stuff. And probably people would quite, I don't, is, it, is it arrogant to say people would like to hear it? But uh, yeah, like again, so fuck it, who cares? Like if they're long, they're long. 
but I would but, like to I get mean, you on it, you again know. to talk about other stuff as well. Like again, th this format that we have, talking a little bit about what you do, and then who's your favorite transformer, and then that's the end of it. That can only last for so long. I, yeah, I mean that's the thing. Any podcast I go on will go on for a while because once you wind me up and let me go uh, in in defiance of sensible runtimes. <laughs> Haven't even talked about Digimon at any point yet. Do you know what? You know, I'm, don't I'm, get me started. I was going to talk... Well, we were talking about the erotic nature of these things earlier. Yeah. Um, you know, if there was going to be one, it was it would be Digimon, wasn't it? They're just in, undeniably sexy. No comment, sir. Uh, I can see Not it. to the best of my recollection, He's gone red. Um, you can't see it. He's gone red. <laughs> um, yeah, so, like, when you... Like, do you ever think that you would do something else with... Dig Is Digimon worth a, a vein worth tapping? No, I, I mean, I I did. I was lucky enough to work on the uh, Blu-ray release mm, yeah. uh, by um, Discotheque Media over in America mm -hmm. of the first uh, series of the anime just at the end of 2022. Mm. Um, now, unfortunately, most of the work that I did wound up uh, not being included on the disc because it didn't meet with license or approval. Oh, uh, but it, it was released uh online for free for everyone to access well, but it's still. like 200 yeah. odd pages of liner notes uh, about behind the scenes trivia and uh, and uh, production notes and just just factoids about mm. the making of the show and the, and the content of it um uh and i could do that because i used to before tf wiki was a thing i used to have a personal digimon website that mm. was basically a wiki before wikis were a thing about digimon uh, that was my first fandom that I got into, like as a teenager, because mm. it was, as I say, it was Transformers and Turtles when you when I was a kid. Yeah. Sonic when I was in my early teen when I was tweening mm. it was, it was <laughs> yeah. Sonic, and then uh, and then uh, in my teens, Digimon was the first thing I got into uh, when I was on the internet. It was the first new thing yeah. that happened that I got into when I was on the internet, and it holds an especially special place. But uh, the answer to your actual question is: Is there something there they could do like a basics thing mm. with uh there definitely is but i'm not really the guy to do it because i don't keep up on everything that's going on right. with that franchise now you know yeah um my love of and experience of it is mostly uh, uh the things from the the older series right okay um, and i haven't watched a lot of the newer stuff but chris isn't digimon just shite pokemon yeah yeah that's right. a terrible thing yeah yeah, yeah i thought that um <laughs> well, please, i would love to have you on the show again again i want to just uh i, I want to just make sure that we uh i don't want to leave it all on the table you know i want to get be i'd able, be happy to come back on if that's okay i would love to get you back on um in the very near future and we can talk one we'll talk who's your, who's your well wait i don't know anything about digimon who's your favorite digimon, who's your favorite digimon? <laughs> Oh, uh, 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 I'm going to look them up and then I'll tell Tentamon. you. Tentamon, it's Tentamon. Tentamon's the best one. Tentamon. Tentomon. T E N T O Mon. Tentomon. Like a big bug. Like a big bug. That's a big. Here, that's a bit of a fucking big bug, is it not? That's, <laughs> <laughs> Does I? That's cool. I, actually, to be fair, that's quite nice. I like that. Um, I, th I, I thought you were going to say the kind of little T Rex guy. Well, that's the uh, that's the Optimus Prime of Digimon answers. Right. Okay, that's that's the one I know. <laughs> a perfectly Greymon? valid answer, but a very obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> that's me, baby. <laughs> um, well, Chris McFeely, thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. I don't have a sign off yet for this show. Uh, Nick Roche had suggested, uh, "Careful, you might be pregnant," as we've shared this hot tub. Yeah, you want something uh, snappy like uh, those were the basics on interview e. <laughs> interview e. Is you know, good. real, real top quality outro material <laughs> like that that in absolutely no way ever gets tired or obvious. <laughs> I love it, man. It's, it's one of those things. It's like you see, what you oh yeah, you know these things are coming, but you know, I was reading the the, the I still read the Viz. You know, I'm 41 years old and I still read the Viz, <laughs> and I was saying to my wife. <laughs> She's not. She never read it because she has no interest in it, and no one should. But there's like, there's strips in there that have been doing the same gag for forty years. Yeah. A man has piles, and he's getting hit in the piles. <laughs> well, yeah, you like um, um, consistency, don't you? Exactly. You know what's coming, but it's still top quality. Drink. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Well, I am going to. 
go and uh, towel off, I suggest you rinse off too, get that chlorine off your body. Yeah, I go and have a wee shower first, you know. And um, I will see you, hater. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that because that bit's probably not going to stay in there. That's true. Fuck. In the show. Do you know what I'm going to... You know I'll keep this bit in. Fuck it, who cares? Who's listening? <laughs> you know, this Who's point. listening to this anyway? <laughs> well, listen to both. Well, Thanks thank very much for having me on, Gav. A lot of fun. No worries. Anytime. And uh, I'll speak to you very soon. Drink to you soon. I love you. Gavin here, just for the end. And I didn't record any kind of outro. We talked about all of Chris's stuff. Oh, what does Chris do? Go to Sonic the Comic and all that patter. I don't even get to... He didn't, he didn't even let me say... <laughs> Go to uh, trdq.org for all our products. There's a link tree there now. Um, thanks very much for listening. I really do appreciate it. And thanks to everyone for the support on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash trdq. The money that we get through that allows us to not only make extra stuff like this happen, but also allows us to buy things for the channel and don't need to worry too much about uh, how much all of this costs me uh, because... As a community, we're, we're doing this all together, so I really do appreciate it, everyone. Um, I'm now kind of just rambling here at my desk in the dark, so I'll let you all go, and I'll just... Uh, I'm not getting a bit ASMR, isn't it? I won't do that. I won't do that. But what I will do is say thank you again, and I'll see you all through the fucking window. That isn't going to be your new sign-off, is it? What? I'll see you through the fucking window. Uh, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Do you not like it? Yeah, it's just a bit fucking contrived. Oh!